everyone, today I will be painting some poppy flowers with beet juice. Now I made this beet juice by chopping up some beets and boiling it. Um, you can see there's maybe small chunks of beets in there still. But that's okay, that's not going to affect the painting or anything. An easier way would probably be to blend up some beetroot in a blender. But uh, I actually originally made this um, to put in a salad. So I diced up some beets, boiled it, and I used the chunks for my salad. So this is kind of like just a side product that I have. And I didn't want to throw it away. And since I've been doing a lot of watercolor paintings, I figured I would give it a try. I mean, ancient times people used to grind up flowers and plants and fruits and use those to make their paints. So I decided to give this a try. This is my first time painting with beetroot juice. First I just sketched out the flowers with a pencil and then using my number 5 micron pen, I am just putting the lines down on top of the pencil. Now I didn't do as much details with the pencil work, so at this stage is where I start adding a little more extra details to it, and we can always add more later. Right around when I was making my beet salad, um, I was actually baking some bread, and I found some poppy seeds that I was going to put on top of my bread. And that's where I originally got the idea to draw poppy flowers. Since I also had a beetroot juice, I decided to use that as the color for the flowers and just giving it a try. So poppy flowers, it's where we get um, opium from. It's also where we get drugs like morphine from. Now of course I got curious about how they get that stuff out of the poppy seeds that we use because it wouldn't be good if we go to the bakery and buy some poppy seed bread or muffins and it's got narcotics in it. That wouldn't be good. Um, so I looked that up. Apparently when poppy seeds are harvested about 20 days or so after the flowers have opened, the morphine is no longer present. I'm not sure why people use poppy seeds in their baking. I just got some one time to try um, and I haven't bought more since then. It doesn't especially taste like anything to me. Maybe that's just me. It does provide a little bit of a crunchy texture to your baked goods. According to some places, it adds a nutty flavor, um, which I haven't especially found, but maybe I'm just not putting enough on there. I haven't exactly covered my bread with it. So once the poppy plant flowers, there's going to be a little pot in the center that contains a ton of these little black seeds. And what you do is you get that little pot and you can shake out the seed um, into your hand or into a container. I also found that other than using it for its narcotics, the poppy flowers recently have been used for decorative purposes. Um, so people grow them just because they are pretty. There are actually, I think about six to seven different kinds of poppies, maybe more, I'm not sure. Um, the most common ones that we see are probably the oriental poppy or common poppy. It's like this bright red flower uh, with four leaves, sorry, four flower petals. Um, and the flower petals are huge on these flowers. The center of the flower petals are usually a little bit darker. I think here I'm going to still make it a little brighter just to give it a little pop. It doesn't have to be exact. We'll call it poppy inspired. I really like how this is turning out. I'm just adding a little extra shades 
to the darker part of the plant. You can see where the flower petals are overlapping. I'm putting more shades to the folds. So now it's time to put some color to these flowers. I'm just using the beetroot juice. The way it is, I have not diluted it or done anything different to it. So straight from the jar, I'm just laying down the first layer of color. It's turning out pretty nicely. I actually really like this color. It's kind of calming and it's still quite vivid. And since I'm using it like watercolor, the first layer doesn't have to be too dark. I find this amount of saturation to be just perfect actually. So I'm kind of just going around and putting that first layer down on all the flowers. I'm just kind of paying attention not to put any color in the center of the flower since I plan to use a different color for that. The reason I really like the number 5 micron pen is that it works perfectly with watercolor or any kind of water-based color it seems. I'm just erasing some of the pencil marks that didn't come off earlier. Some of them are peeking through the sides of the line art. It's okay if I leave a little bit behind, doesn't have to be perfect. And the micron pen survives through you know, the pencil erasers, the watercolor, and it still comes out pretty nice and crisp underneath the colors. I'm also using just a water paper pad, and it seems the paper is perfect for the beet juice. Uh, for the beet juice, I ended up putting it in this little glass jar. Some of you can probably tell right away it's a yogurt jar, which is actually perfect for this purpose. So I've been working down from the top left to the bottom right, and by the time I finish the bottom right flower, the top left one has dried. So now we're ready to put down the second layer of the beet juice. And you can see it's a little bit darker, so it's just like layering watercolor. It's adding that extra dimension. I left just a little bit of white space near the top of the petal, and that kind of gives the petal a little bit of depth, so it's not like just a flat petal. Now I'm going around just adding a little bit of shade under the first set of petals, the top two petals. And adding a little bit of crease for the bottom two petals. For just the second layer, that beet juice is really providing a deeper red color. So the second layer of red, I'm kind of doing the edges and emphasizing the creases, especially where the two petals overlap and the inside of the little cup structure that the petals are forming. Just add a little bit more crease over here on the top leaf. I don't think real poppy flowers actually have this many creases. 
on the petals but I'm really just having a fun time painting these just to give it a little extra dimension and sometimes I get a little carried away and that's okay so a little extra over here now I could only use the beet juice for the flowers themselves for the stems and the leaves I am still using my watercolor set here I'm using the color sap green for the leaves and the stem. That's the color number 599 from my watercolor set. I use the Winsor & Newton 14 color set. If you're interested in trying out this set, there's a link in the description below. I have been enjoying this set so far. Um, I've used it for my all my watercolor painting video so far. Here I'm adding a little extra green color using the Viridian Hue Green. It's a little more vivid and a little bit darker. I would say this is a very beginner friendly color set. I would definitely not go anywhere cheaper than this. I have used um, cheaper water coloring boxes before and when you put them on paper a lot of the colors once they are dry they're very chalky and they fall right off so if you put your finger on it and just gently tap it you'll see it gets the color gets off on your finger and that's not great it also gives it kind of a chalky look as well for the finished painting So I'm just going back and adding a little bit more beet juice just for a third layer now that all the flowers are dry again. Just putting a little extra red underneath the top two petals and that would make the top petals really pop a little more. Same thing with this one, really kind of give it that dimension. I don't think it needs much more because I don't want to overwork it. There are definitely times when you can add too much detail to one painting. So now I'm just going back to my watercolor box set. And I'm mixing up a little bit of cerulean blue and ultramarine blue and I'm using them to emphasize the shadows a little bit more on both the flowers and the leaves. Now once that step is done, I'm just adding a black border around the whole painting. I just kind of like having a border around these flower paintings, I don't know why. Now I'm just going over the line art a little more. Not the details inside the flowers, mostly just around the outer edge. So this will make the whole painting stand out a little bit more. I'm still using the number 5 micron pen. Going around all the flowers, all the stems, and all the leaves. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate your support if you could hit the thumb up button below and subscribe for more videos just like these. I actually really enjoyed how this painting turned out. I took this final video after everything have dried a few days after and it looks like the beet juice did not dry to a different color so it remained true to the original color. I forgot to record the part where I painted the center yellow but here is the final painting. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my other video where I paint daisy flowers with watercolor and a micron pen. You can click on the link to the top right to go to that video. 
Thank you for watching. Until next time.